Hello everyone, I welcome you all with a very big heart. In this video lesson, I bring to you question answers of chapter reproduction in plants. So let's get started. First question is define reproduction. The process by which living organisms produce young ones of their own kind and multiply in number is called reproduction. Next question is, what do you mean by vegetative propagation? We can have an answer like this. Vegetative propagation is a type of asexual reproduction in plants in which a complete new plant is produced from any vegetative part that is stems, roots and leaves of the plant. It is a common practice in horticulture for producing plants. Next question. How does vegetative propagation take place? Through leaves. Fleshy leaves of certain plants like bryophyllum and begonia bear adventitious birds in the notches present along the margin of their leaves. These adventitious birds develop into plantlets under favorable conditions. When leaves fall the ground, plantlets and birds develop into new plants. Question number four is, what are different types of pollinations? The different types of pollinations are self-pollination, when the pollens are transferred from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant, it is called as self-pollination or autogamy. It takes place only in bisexual flowers. Example, pea, wheat, etc. Cross-pollination, the second type. When pollen grains are transferred from the anther of a flower, to the stigma of another flower of another plant of same species, it is called cross-pollination or allogamy. It can take place in both unisexual and bisexual flowers. Example, mage, castor, etc. Next question, what are the female and male reproductive organs in plants? The female reproductive organ in plants is called carpel or pistil. It lies in the center of the flower as a flask shaped structure and consists of three parts stigma, style, and ovary. The male reproductive organ in plants is called stamen. The stamen consists of two parts a filamentous stalk and a swallowed bilobed anther. The anther bears four pollen sacs inside which pollen grains are present. Next question. What is the function of a flower? Why are flowers so colorful or fragrant? The function of a flower is to make male and female gametes and to ensure that fertilization will take place to make seeds for growing new plants. The second part of uh, the question asks us about the colorful or fragrant flowers. So children, uh, flowers are so colorful or fragrant just to attract insects towards them so that pollination can occur. Next question, what would happen if all the seeds of a plant were to fall at the same place below the plant and grow there. If all the seeds of a plant were to fall at the same place below the plant and grow there together, then they would compete with one another for water and minerals from the soil and sunlight. As a result, the newly growing plants would not be healthy and many of them would die. Next question is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of vegetative propagation? Advantages Number one is, 
it is a cheaper easier and also faster method of propagation in plants than growing plants from seeds next is better quality of plants with fruits and flowers having desirable characters such as size taste and aroma can be produced by this method it is the best method of multiplication of seedless plants like pineapple banana and sugarcane better traits of the parent plant can be preserved with this method let's see few disadvantages vegetative propagation induces overcrowding that leads to severe competition for space and nutrients since no genetic variation occurs so there is less adaptability to the new environment disease of the parent plant are sometimes transmitted to the daughter plants undesirable characters can also be transmitted from one generation to another generation question number 9 is what is fertilization how does it take place fertilization is the process in which the male gamete present in the pollen grain fuses with the female gamete present in the ovule to form a new cell called as zygote it take place as follows after pollination the pollen grain produces a tube called pollen tube containing two male gametes which grows through the style and reaches one of the ovule in the ovary the pollen tube enters the ovule through a small opening called as micropyle then the pollen tube bursts open and one of the male gametes comes out of it and combines with the female gamete present in the ovule to form zygote zygote develops into an embryo embryo contains one or two cotyledons which store food for future next question is related to the process of germination of seed let's see the answer germination is the process of formation of a seedling developed from the embryo it takes place in the following ways the dry dormant seed when gets favorable conditions such as moisture suitable temperature and oxygen then becomes active and starts germinating in the moist soil the seed coat first splits open the food inside swells up and in presence of water the enzymes present in the seed digest the stored food and makes it soluble the soluble food diffuses in the embryo and allows first the radical and then the plumil, plumil to grow the radical moves downward into the soil whereas plumil moves upwards and comes out of the soil to form shoot radical actually forms the root of the plant next question is explain the different methods of seed dispersal as we have already discussed this topic in the previous video also so we can have answer like this the three main agents which helps in the dispersal of seeds and fruits are wind the light small or hairy seeds are carried away to distant places by the wind seeds of dandelion drumstick maple madar and fruit of acer and sunflower are dispersed by wind water seeds and fruits having structure favorable for floating are dispersed by water seeds of lily lotus and coconut develop spongy outer coat which keeps them afloat in water and carry them to different places animals the seeds and fruits of some plants like mistletoe xanthium have hooks spines bristles etc on their surface which stick to the skin of the animals or clothes of the human beings and are carried away to distant places animals birds and also human beings sometimes eat the edible portion of the fruits and throw away seeds 
such seeds also germinates when get favorable conditions another method is explosion sometimes in plants like peas the pods split open due to unequal drying and the seeds are thrown out at a distance with a jerk this is called as explosive mechanism of seed dispersal explain different methods of asexual reproduction with examples various methods by which asexual reproduction occurs are binary fission the division or splitting of the parent cell into two equal parts is called binary fission each part grows into a new individual amoeba paramecium etc reproduces by this method budding the formation of a new organism from the outgrowth arising on the parent body is called budding this outgrowth is a bulb like projection known as bud hydra reproduces by this method spore formation some simple multicellular organisms like algae fungus etc reproduce by forming tiny spores on their body which when dispersed germinate into new individuals under favorable conditions this is called as spore formation spores are present inside knob like structure called as sporangium at maturity sporangium breaks open to release spores next method is fragmentation it is the process of reproduction in which the body of the parent organism breaks into two or more fragments each fragment or piece of the body grows into a new individual multicellular organisms with simple body organization like spirogyra sponges sea stars etc reproduce by this method next question is how does sexual reproduction take place in plants let's see the answer majority of the flowering plants reproduce sexually the flower is the reproductive part of a plant that is both male and female gametes are produced by flowers the sexual reproduction in plants proceed through the following steps pollination it involves transfer of pollen grains from anther of the stamen to the stigma of the pistil next step is fertilization during fertilization the male and female gametes fuse to form a zygote formation of seed here a zygote develops into a seed next one is formation of fruit ovary mature into a fruit germination of seed in presence of moisture the seed swells up and the seed coat bursts open radical grows into the soil to form root whereas plumule grows upwards and forms the shoot of the plant so with this we have come to the end of this video thank you very much for being with me in this video lots of love until next time bye bye take care